I've been waiting to make this video for ages. It's a week of Mac releases from Apple. They're doing this very interesting thing where every day we get new Macs. By the way, guys, we've worked out that 87% of the people who watch this channel regularly aren't subscribed, which is a bit orcs. If that's you, I've done this myself loads of times, I've just forgot to hit the button. Just give it a little, little click. It makes a massive difference. Thank you. I won't do a great big preamble about the Mac Mini itself because I'll be here for the next 30 minutes and you've got better things to be doing. However, I will say, I think it's one of Apple's most, it, actually, is it Apple's best Mac? I think it might be. You know, in, in the past, I've said that the M1 MacBook Air is their best ever Mac. I think I'm gonna change that opinion live now. That, that M1 MacBook Air is Apple's best ever laptop. I think as a an overall Mac, just in terms of price, value, capabilities, you know, the flexibility, all that sort of stuff. It hits all of those things perfectly. It's a sleeper. And the price, the, the entry level for this into Mac OS is just unbeatable. Now we have a new one and it's nowhere near the size of this. It's tiny, it's a tiny little thing. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about the things that are good about the brand new M4 Mac Mini, the things that aren't so good about it, the things that people will, will moan about anyway, even though they don't matter, and the one that I've ordered. Let's get into it. The good stuff about the brand new M4 Mac Mini is, firstly, it starts at 599, 599 quid, 599 dollars in the US. If you want a Mac, if you want to get into Mac OS for the first time, or you just need another Mac for your business or for your home or whatever, just go and buy that entry level. M4 Mac Mini. Just go and get it. it. Carry on watching this video, obviously, but just go and buy it. There's no other Mac like it when it comes to value. Yes, you need to buy a keyboard, mouse, display, etc. but even if you add those things on, if you don't spend too much money on them, it's unbeatable value. The second thing is that we have 16 gig of RAM, not RAM, unified memory as standard now. They've got rid of the eight gig thing. That thing, that eight versus 16, argument that's been going on for, well, since 2020 basically, has ended because you can't buy a an eight gig Mac mini anymore. They start at 16 gig and bearing in mind that the pricing hasn't changed, happy days. You know, you're, you're basically getting double what you've got before for the same money. It's also up to 20 times faster than a 2018 Intel Mac Mini. So if you've still got an Intel Mac Mini, which basically looks like this, it doesn't look any different to this M2 Pro version, what a time to upgrade. There's an M4 Pro version as well, so you have the standard M4 and the M4 Pro. The latter is ridiculously good. So it's 1.6 times faster in terms of CPU and 1.5 times fa faster in terms of GPU than this, the M2 Pro, which is already a very quick and capable Mac. The Mac Mini is now as tiny as it should be. If you've ever looked inside an M2 or an M1 Mac Mini case, there's loads of free space in there. It's just, this is way too big for what's going on inside. So now we have a proper, well, it's, it's less than half the footprint of this one. So it's considerably smaller than this. It's apparently 1 20th the size of a similarly priced PC desktop. No idea what that one, what that PC desktop is, but it's, it's just, utterly tiny. It's also the first carbon neutral Mac. Then we have the port situation. So on the current Mac mini or the old Mac mini as it, as it is now, all of the ports are on the back. There's nothing on the front. It's a completely blank space on the front of it, which is a bit of a pain because if you need to plug stuff in, you have to lean over and it's just a, yeah, it's not great. What they've done with the new one, they've kept three ports on the back, but they've also put a headphone jack and two USB-C ports on the front. That is Mac Studio levels of convenience. If you go for the M4 Pro version, it can handle up to three 6K displays. Three, six, what? Even if you go for the M4, the, you know, the base model version, that will still drive two 6K displays and one 5K display. It's just, this thing is nuts. It is basically the Mac Mini I've been waiting for, but this is the internet, which means I now need to list the things that aren't so good about it. Okay, this list isn't very long, just to pre-warn you, but the first thing is that there's no black or orange version of the new Mac Mini. To put some context around that, there were some rumors about this new Mac Mini having different colors. And if you know me, you know that I love orange things and I love black tech as well. I think if you, as soon as you make a piece of tech black, whether it's the, you know, the, the new Apple Watch Ultra or the MacBook Pro, it looks immeasurably more lovely. And I, I, for some reason, I think the combination of that rumor and the rumor that 
it was going to be about the same size as an Apple TV. I just had in my head that, that there'd be the choice of the standard silver version or a black version because that's like the Apple TV or some funky kind of iMac colors for instance like orange there's not it's just it's just silver next up is the fact that there's no USB A ports so on the current Mac no sorry the old Mac mini I need to get used to this we have two USB A ports here which are pretty handy I do use these there's, there's certain things that I you know, certain peripherals and accessories that I use that need that USB A port and it's very handy just to plug it straight in without a dongle. Okay, next up, oh yeah, storage. Um, it's still ridiculously expensive. As soon as you start adding internal storage onto your Mac mini, it just goes nuts. So I added two terabytes to my configuration, which I'll come on to in a moment. That cost me an extra 600 quid. Last up on my list of bad things is the rack mount problem. So very, very quickly, uh, on, on during the intro video for this M4 Mac Mini, they showed server farms as being one of the use cases where basically these businesses buy thousands of these and put them into rack mounts to power whatever they're doing with it. Probably can't do that with the new one because it's a completely different redesign. It's a bit taller, I think, and smaller. If you buy these in bulk for that reason, then you're gonna have to get some kind of third party thing to make it rack mountable, I guess. Okay, so good things, bad things done, and now for a list of things that people will still moan about even though they don't matter. The first thing is that they have moved the power button from there, which is where it's always been, to roughly here somewhere. So it's basically on the underside of the M4 Mac Mini. Now, it doesn't matter because it looks like they've put it relatively conveniently because you can put your finger under it and, and press it. However, I've been doing this job long enough. I, I, I know how the internet works. I know how Apple fans work and non-Apple fans. People will say, oh, I've got to now I've got to turn my Mac Mini upside down to turn it on, have I? Oh, great. It doesn't matter. Equally, how often do you turn your Mac Mini on and off? Next up is the fact they've moved the headphone jack from the rear of the Mac Mini to the front of it. For me, that's a benefit. The ability to, you know, to just plug my headphones in and take them out very easily when I'm not using them is a godsend. For some people though, I know and I've seen people complain about this already, they don't like it. I think, I think the idea of having a cable sticking out if you leave your headphones plugged in isn't great for people. So that is, again, that, that might be a, a tiny bone of contention. And that's it actually. I, I can't find anything else with this Mac Mini that is going to be a problem for people, I hope. Okay, so who should buy the new Mac Mini? I think there's three types of people. The first type of person is someone who still has an Intel Mac Mini and wants to upgrade. This is the best time ever. The second person is someone who has an M1 Mac Mini who wants more power or who wants more internal storage or more memory. Again, what a time to be alive. And the third one is someone who hasn't got into the Mac Mini game yet, but has been thinking about buying a Mac Mini for quite some time. If that's you, again, it, there's never been a better time. This, this looks like the best, not only the best Mac Mini ever, but potentially, I, I will reserve judgment until I get it in my hands, potentially the best Mac ever made. Right, let's reveal the spec that I've pre-ordered. So I've gone for the M4 Pro version. I spec'd it up to have the 14 core CPU and the 20 core GPU. What a machine. 64 gig of unified memory, two terabyte SSD, which I had to remortgage my house for, and 10 gigabit ethernet, which I went for just because Patrick Rambles did. The total for that was 2,899 pounds, which is a lot of money. It's gonna come into this studio, this new M4 Pro Mac Mini, and it's gonna revolutionize it. No, it's not. Basically, it's gonna become the main studio machine that I use here. And there's an another project I have ready for it, which I'm very excited about. So if you don't wanna, if you don't wanna miss my review of that and all of the stuff that's gonna to happen to it beyond there, make sure you hit that button, that subscribe button, and the bell not to miss those videos. Now, guys, it's over to you. I want to know, are you getting yourself an M4 Mac Mini? What are you gonna do with it? And equally, are you not getting one? Is there something that Apple didn't do that you wanted? Basically, tell me what you're up to with the M4 Mac Mini. And if you've still got some time, hang around for a link to another video that I think you'll find very interesting.